Welcome back, rankers. Thanks to Sun LJ last week, I was saying I couldn't get author stats to work and what was going on, but he said, are you logged into the right account? No, I wasn't. Duh. So, <laughs> what does author stats look like? Well, if you go under labs, and then if you go into author stats, you'll get to see all this lovely stuff that 487 of my pages have appeared with my authorship link, and it's generated 60,000 impressions, and it's converted to 700 clicks, so pretty poor click-through rate. But if you have a look at some of the pages that are appearing, obviously the ones on the stuartmedia.biz blog, but then also a lot of the YouTube stuff. So by connecting the YouTube account through to the Google profile account, Google starts to see that I'm publishing at various places. What I'm trying to do at the moment is get other places that we publish to put authorship code on their pages. It's not hard, uh, and it's a boon for journalists. If you're a writer, you, wherever you publish, get them to do Google authorship. Today, though, I wanted to talk to you about site speed again. Now, remember, I, since about 2009, Google's been telling us about SiteSpeed and how important it is and why they want to have the, the web faster. And it's all about user experience. They want to send their users to fast sites so they keep using Google because they get good results and they get a good experience when they go to the result pages. In Webmaster Tools under Labs, we've had site performance there for quite some time. If I was to click on site performance, I used to get a nice little graph. Now, it was made up of data that was coming from people who had the Google toolbar installed. I don't know whether that's still the case. I haven't been able to find anything about it this morning, but I would suspect maybe it's also got to do with people who are using Google Chrome. Call me a conspiracy theorist. I'm just saying. And what they're doing is looking at the, the pages that they're surfing or the pages that they're looking at and returning that data to Google to tell them how long that page is taking to download. Now, when I looked at our site, and you'll see here it's gone, right? It's no longer here. And that's because it's now part of Google Analytics. And this has just gone under the radar a bit. Google hasn't, I haven't seen any announcements about this. This happened maybe three days ago. And under site speed, in uh, the content section of your Google Analytics, you will see you can get an overview. And it's saying here our average page load time is 10 seconds. That's insanely bad. I don't think it's right, and I'll show you why. Uh, page timings, uh, and it's telling you which pages are the slowest. Now, the reason I think it's odd is because when I go into Google Webmaster Tools and I have a look at health and I have a look at crawl stats, it tells me that the time spent downloading a page in milliseconds is the highest or the slowest it's been in this, in this period is 1.8 seconds. The average is 1.1. So we never get that 10 second high that Google's talking about. Not from the Google bot anyway. These numbers are coming from the Google bot's experience, not the user's experience. Now here's the difference. The Google bot isn't downloading images necessarily. It's not downloading, say, flash files. It's purely looking at text and code. So there could be something in that. So you look at that 1.8 seconds, you go, well, what's causing, that seems pretty good. So we go over to webpagetest.org. And webpagetest.org actually says it's worse than 10 seconds. It's saying 15 seconds. And this is for the, the slowest page, so a blog post from two weeks ago. So this is from the slowest page. And this page doesn't have any graphics on it. It's got an embedded video, so we're not actually downloading the video from the page. It's coming from YouTube. And what are the other things it's got? Well, if I look here, it's got a few other things on the page. It's got uh, this thing here, which is actually related to, and this is the page I'm talking about, this stuff here. The other thing that seems to be slowing things down is the Facebook plugins down here. So there's a number of things going on, and every time you add, say, this sort of stuff, anything that has to go out and rely on another site to download, you're relying on them to, to give the user that stuff quickly. And in this case, this image here is taking forever. Well, it's taking a second, which 
in the context of things is a long time compared to everything else. It should be taking milliseconds. However, when I then go and have a look at the Google tool to look at page speed, it tells me that there's no high priorities. There's some small things you could do, maybe serve resources from a consistent URL. And that's because some of the Facebook stuff that we're doing, some of it's coming from um, an SSL connection and other parts of the Facebook stuff are not coming from an SSL connection. That means a, a secure connection, basically. And when I go back over and have a look at uh, page speed test, it tells me, indeed, that some of the secure sockets layer stuff is taking longer to load. Specifically, uh, this number here is, you can see it's HTTPS, and it's taking one and a half seconds uh, to do just the SSL negotiation. So there's a bunch, and you can see them all here, and these are all in variety, there's Facebook. So a lot of the SSL stuff is taking time to load for the user. But according to the Google bot, it's 1.8 seconds. So how do you make a decision on what to do? Do you believe the crawl stats in Webmaster Tools, 1.8 seconds? Or do you believe web page test? Or do you believe page speed insights from Google? Or do you believe the new site speed tool within Google Analytics? Well, I'm looking at this this morning and I'm thinking, I'm going to believe webpagetest.org to a certain extent because it's giving me a lot more data than Google PageSpeed it's, or Google Analytics Site Search. It's giving me uh, a lot of information about improvements that, that we could make. And especially this long line here is for that particular image, just that image there is taking that long and it's delaying everything, the full page load time. So Googlebot isn't necessarily seeing that, but the Google Toolbar and maybe Google Chrome is actually seeing that for the, for the people that come to our site that use those things. And I would say a lot of people who come to our site would use those things because they're interested in you know the website and how it's performing and all those other things. And certainly the toolbar is one of the things most common for people to get an idea of page rank and all that sort of stuff. So that's site speed. So you go into content, site speed, and you can get look at page timings and user timings and that sort of thing. Uh, just one other thing that you should be looking at for site performance. I know we talk about this a lot, and a lot of people have said, oh, 404s, yeah. What's... You need to watch your 404s. And the reason is not only to make sure you get your site performing, but you could be missing out on some great backlinks. And I've just discovered a couple this morning for our own site. If I go and have a look at health, and then I go and have a look at crawl errors. I noticed we've had a few 404s pop up over the last week or so. It's only 11, not massive. And, you know, but you can see there that it's, it's sort of gone up slightly around here over the last month. And then I go and have a look at them. This is a post from 2005, so I don't know why that's just popped up recently. Uh, and this one's, you know, 2007. But what you can do, this one here is interesting because it actually represents an, a post regarding SEO over the last month or so. And if I go and click on it, the one thing a lot of people don't know you can do is you can find out where Google's finding that busted link from. And it's finding it from, you just click on the LinkedIn tab, and it's finding it from these SEO-related sites. So I'm going to now go in and 301 that non-existing URL to the real URL so I get the value of that backlink from an SEO site. And that's it for this week's show. We'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.